What's up and welcome to my guitar channel. When I was but a fledgling guitarist, I stumbled across Children of Bodom and I was blown away by how they could make such pretty songs even though their genre is such an aggressive, in-your-face style of music. To this day, I can't get enough of their music. So instead of doing anything fancy in this video, I want to show you how you can approach putting these beautiful melodic moments in your compositions in a similar way that Alexi did. If Alexi didn't actually do it this way, then one, I'd be surprised, and two, it doesn't matter, because we're getting the same result out of this. So for those of you who haven't been around for a while, I usually wrap up my videos with my attempt of what I've discussed today. If you're still uncertain of the the facts that I'm presenting at the end of the video, then you can hear my attempt to recreate it using these parameters, and it should give you a pretty good sense of the results you'll get. We're going to look at three songs. Every Time I Die, Are You Dead Yet, and Bodom After Midnight. We'll dissect them and then use what we learned to create something new. I am in standard tuning, however, everything that I'm playing here and the tabs that I'm providing are the way that it's played on the original track. If you learn the tab that's on this video, to play along with the original track, the only thing that you need to change is the tuning of your guitar. You don't need to change any frets or anything else. So let's get into it. Here's Every Time I Die. First power chord is E. What's being played over the top of that is B, E, G, E, B, E, G, E. The notes in the E minor chord are E, G, and B. All right, so straight off the bat, all Alexi's doing to create this over the E is just playing the notes that exist in the E chord. There's nothing special going on here. We go down to this chord, which is a D. The notes in the D major chord are D, F sharp, and A. The notes that are played up here is F sharp and A and back to F sharp. So essentially all we're doing is outlining the D major chord on that second chord. The third chord is G. The notes in G are G, B, and D. The notes that are played are G, B, G. And to play that in context, so we're just going E, D, and G. That's it, there's no other special notes going on. The next chord, C. Believe it or not, he's just playing the notes that are found in the C major chord. C, E, and G. The notes that are played up here are... Which is C, E, and G. Are you following? We're not playing anything outside of it. The next two chords. These two. These are actually starting to step outside of what we expect. On the D, we have F sharp, B, and back to F sharp. So we've got our first note that doesn't exist in there, and then over the E minor, we've got F sharp, D, and F sharp, which we're starting to move very far away from what should be in that chord. Then we move on to the next part of the riff. The held chords are D, down to B, C, back to D. The next part is... So over that D, we play that once. The chords then move to the B. This stays here. So even though the chords go down to the B, the melody doesn't change. This implies that the chord we're listening to is a B minor seven. If you don't understand what I mean by the implication of a B minor seven, please leave a comment below and just simply ask. As the C chord plays, notes change which these notes actually change to outline an E, but because there's the C below it, it is now outlining a C major seven. It's the same reason as the B before. Uh, I'm not gonna explain why, but that's what's happening there. And then finally, we go back to the D, which once again, we're simply outlining the D major chord. So an incredibly obvious pattern is starting to emerge. It's pretty simply, if you're playing a chord, you play the triad that belongs to that chord above it, make a melody out of it, and then you move on. Let's see how this is changed in Are You Dead Yet? We've already looked at this song in a bit of detail in one of my other videos up there. So go and look at that if you'd like to see, but we are gonna explore this from a different perspective today. The chords are D, F, C, E flat, B flat, G. 
this pattern is actually really obvious. The two guitars that are harmonizing essentially have the exact same low notes because they're only bouncing between two notes. So for the one doing fifths, it's simply following the bass line exactly as, as it is, but it's playing the fifth higher each note. It's just bouncing between the fifths. So if you take the D, a fifth away is A. Then we go up to F, a fifth away from F is C. Then a fifth away from C is G. And then we go to the E flat. A fifth away from the E is the B flat, of course. Then we go to B, a fifth away from the B flat is the F. Then we finish on the G. The fifth away from the G is the D. The next one is just bouncing between the third. So it's doing D to F. You then slide up to the F and you hit the A. Then we go to the E, bounce up to the G and back. Then we do the E flat to the G. And then the B flat to the D. And then we do G, G, B flat, A. But an octave higher. If you actually put those together, all they're doing is outlining the chords we're expecting to go to D minor, F major, C major, E flat major, B major, and then to G minor. Really hope you're starting to see an obvious pattern at this point in time. Let's move on to Bodum After Midnight and see if anything changes. This one actually has a slightly different approach. Now I'm not going to show you the rhythm guitars in this one because it doesn't matter, you can see the tab, you've got the idea at this point in time. What happens here is slightly different, uh, but it's still building off the same thing. So if we take an F major chord, we've got our first idea. If we make that an F major 7, all we do is add an E on the top. So, and then, it's doing the same thing, you're just doing another iteration of it, the next one up. The next part is essentially building a C major 7 chord. If we wanted to get technical, all we're doing is stacking thirds on top of the F Lydian scale. Technically we're playing like an F major sharp 13 chord, or F major 9 with an add sharp 4, or a C slash F polychord. I'm really not sure on the terminology, but that's what the notes are that we're implying. The point is that this melody was also built from playing with triads, playing with the three notes that belong to the chord that you're playing and stacking them on top of each other to get the result that you want. So I hope you got the idea here. If you want to create Alexi style things, all you need to do is play with the triads that you're using. So to run this video out, I'm gonna show you my little composition that I've done for this. The chords are E, D, F, and then C, B, D. Now, of course, over the E, I'm gonna play E, G, B. Over the D, I'm gonna play D, F sharp, A. Over the F, I'm gonna play F, A, C. Over the C, I'm gonna play C, E, G. Over the B, I'm gonna play B, D, F sharp. And over the D, I'm gonna play D, F sharp, A once again. If it's not, if it's not clear by now, this is a very, very simple process. And so long as you know your basic chords, all you need to do is move around the power chords and play those basic chords over the top and you're gonna get a result that's similar to mine. So if you like this video, you learned something from it, please leave me a like, it really helps me out. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please ask them in the comments below and please subscribe if you'd like to see more. Enjoy.